Friday at Pizza Flicks. Attention, please. Attention, please. We regret that due to adverse weather conditions, flight number B103 from New York is expected to be one hour late. I see you have a diplomatic passport, Mr. Anderson. Are you traveling alone? No, I have my wife with me. She isn't feeling very well, I'm afraid. We had a pretty rough trip across the ocean. Oh, I don't want to bother her. Just let me have her passport, please. Pardon me. Can I have your passport, please, darling? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never mind, I'll get it myself. the ocean. I walk. <laughs> well, how do you like it? I wish we were back home. I wish I was in my own bed. I wish Darling, that Darling, we... don't be a baby. You love London. You've just arrived. I used to live not far from here, just after the war. I had a girlfriend. English. Very pretty. Right now, I'm too tired to be jealous. Remind me tomorrow. What was she like? Blonde, petite, cute kid. I hate you. You sure? This is a funny kind of a hotel. 
No desk clerk, no bellboys, no lobby. It isn't a hotel. Service flat. A what? A furnished apartment with service. A switchboard and a restaurant downstairs. Anything you want? Mm-hmm. What? I want to go to sleep right now. Make yourself at home. I got the suitcases. I guess we are right, honey. The embassy's given us a car for all the time we're in. Yeah. Mr. Anderson? Speaking. Sorry to disturb you so early, eh? This is the DD of planning section, ERP. Uh, look, it's a bit early for the alphabet. I'm speaking for the director of planning, European Recovery Program. They need your presence in Paris late this afternoon, Mr. Anderson. We've reserved a seat for you on the 8 o'clock plane from London Airport. Oh, look, I just arrived. I know. This was rather unexpected. A top-level conference. The Paris offices reserved a room for you in the Hotel Lorraine. Our representative will contact you there shortly after your arrival. Just wait until he does. What's the topic of the conference? I'm sorry, Anderson, there isn't time to go into it now. You'd better start if you want to catch that plane. Have a good flight.
Well, it is, eh? Are you leaving for the office? This isn't Pennsylvania, honey. It's London. I'm going to Paris, not the office. Paris? The office just called. There's a high-level conference this afternoon. They need me right away. It shouldn't take more than a day or two. A day or two? Well, what am I going to do in the meantime? I don't know a soul here. It can't be helped, honey. Anyway, you're a big girl now. Well, why can't you take me with you? <laughs> oh, sure. You'd like another plane trip, wouldn't you? Oh. Now, look. I'm going to drive the car to the airport. What car? Well, they've given us a car for all the time we're in London. It's downstairs in the garage. Look, I'm going to drive it out to London Airport and leave it in the car park. I'll leave the keys for you with the parking attendant. But will you please listen and try and remember? Wake me up in the middle of the night with a lot of double talk about Paris and cars and airports. Now, look, will you please try and remember? This is important. I don't care. All I know is you're going away and leaving me. Now, here I am, a bride of three weeks, practically deserted at the altar. Look, I'm going to have to run if I want to catch this plane. All right, Mr. Anderson, run. I won't be any longer than I have to. Oh, you needn't hurry. I can have just as gay a time here as you'll be having in Paris. June. Yes, Mr. Anderson, we have your reservation, flight 107. But I'm afraid all flights to Paris have been cancelled. What? Very heavy fog. Both Orly and Le Bourget are closed in. We don't expect it to clear until this afternoon, if then. But I've got to get to Paris today. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, what about the boat train? Golden Arrow. It leaves Victoria Station in eight minutes. I'm afraid you won't make that. Do you have a car? Yeah. Oh, well, the car ferry leaves at, um, at 11. If your car is fast and if the traffic is Thank you very it. much. with me. Then why haven't you kept your bargain and delivered the merchandise on time? What do you mean, on time? I didn't promise to deliver them at a definite day, at a definite hour. I promised to deliver them, and I will. Ah, that's not good enough for me. It will have to be. Besides, your impatience won't deliver them any the faster. Now, wait a minute. I didn't say you wouldn't keep your word. And a deal's a deal. But since you haven't faith enough in my ability to... I didn't say that. And I don't want my money back. <laughs> Thank you. Your renewed confidence is touching. <laughs> How are you uh, getting them into the country? Come, come, my friend. I don't ask you how you dispose of them. But I'm perfectly willing to tell you how I dispose of them, even to whom. I'm not curious. Besides, we should have our little secrets. All right. Just be sure I get them this week, or there'll be trouble. I'm sure there will. 
Uh, by the way, uh, how are your new roses coming along? Oh, wonderfully well. I'm using a new kind of compass that... Mr. Anderson, would you step into the customs office for a minute, please? There's a small matter we want to check with your car papers. Well, I'm traveling in a diplomatic passport. Well, this is just a formality, sir. It won't take a moment. Will you follow me, please? Okay. Officer. Officer. Oh, may I trouble you? I cannot move my car. I wonder, could you possibly help me? Well, certainly, miss. Which one is it? Is this one over here? I uh, don't know what I've done to it. of me not to notice the handbrake. But you know what women drivers are. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to have dropped you, but everything's all right. Thank you. Morning. Morning, monsieur. My left front tire has got a slow leak. Can you fix it for me? Yes, monsieur. As soon as I finish what I'm doing. How long will that take you? Five minutes, maybe ten. Okay. I'll grab a bite to eat. Let me know when you're finished, please. Certainly, monsieur. Uh, the keys, monsieur, are they in the car? Yeah, they're in there. Ham and eggs, sunny side up. Come on. Uh, Café. Oui, monsieur. Et le jambon. Oui, monsieur. Et les oeufs. Oui, monsieur. Sunny side up. Come on. Uh, sunny side up. Uh, avec le soleil. Avec le soleil. Oui, the sun, monsieur. No, not with the sun. Um, sunny side up. Uh, look, um, can I show you? What up?
Sonnez ça, Idap Oui. Bon. Monsieur, l'addition Monsieur, les Sunny Sider Quick, get in and drive. But Philippe, we cannot do that. Don't argue, you fool. Go on. Là-dedans, monsieur. Ils ont des brigands, hein C'est dommage. C'est terrible, c'est formidable. Who's this, please? <clears throat> Who's this, please? Switchboard operator, madam. Oh, well, uh, may I order some breakfast? Breakfast? Yes. It's the middle of the afternoon, madam. It, i it is? Oh. Well, uh, may I order some food? Certainly. I'll connect you with the dining room, and you can order whatever you wish. Thank you very much. Who is it? Your meal, madam. Oh, be right out. Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. I wasn't quite sure what uh, sort of meal you wanted, but as you left it to us, I brought you some Scotch salmon, a little sauté kidney, mm. and some buttered scones, ma'am. My, that looks like an awful lot of food. Just a good, nourishing high tea, ma'am. High tea? In England, uh, all this is called high tea. But uh, since you're American, ma'am, I've also brought you some coffee. <laughs> Wonderful. And some of our special biscuits. Biscuits? Oh, cookies. Oh, they look delicious. I thought you might care to see the evening paper, ma'am. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Jonathan. I, uh... Oh, just a minute. Thanks, I can manage now. Excuse me, ma'am, but, uh, that is far too much. That is quite adequate for my services. Well, for heaven's sake. Oh, Jonathan. Ma'am? What is there to do in London? Well, uh... It looks as if I'm going to be here all alone for a day or two. I mean, well, what would be exciting? Well, ma'am, have you seen the, uh, the Houses of Parliament? Or the British Museum? Oh, and I could go shopping. British woolens. You should get some wonderful bargains, ma'am. You must tell me which are the best shops. I'd like to get a surprise for my husband when he gets back. Uh, gets back, ma'am? Well, yes, he's in Paris. Oh, Paris. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you need anything further, you just have to lift the receiver, ma'am.
Had a girlfriend. English. Right now, I'm too tired to be jealous. Remind me tomorrow. Blonde, petite, cute kid. Gonna need me right away. Needn't hurry. I can have just as gay a time here as you'll be having in Paris. Just as gay a time here. Just as gay a time here. Quick, eh, monsieur? Yeah, very quick. She is not new, but très comfortable, no? Might have been worse than the spiked barrel, but not much. So long, my friend. Thanks. Do you have a room? Uh, certainly, monsieur. Uh, would you register, please? Uh, your, uh, your luggage, uh, monsieur Anderson? I haven't got any, I'm sorry. My car was stolen just outside town. Oh, how unfortunate. Uh, a hotel rule, monsieur, but uh, perhaps you would not mind paying a 2,000 francs advance. No, certainly not. Uh, thank you, monsieur. I am... Uh, I am sorry to have to ask it. That's all right. Thank you, monsieur. Uh, here we are, monsieur. Room 326. I will have a bellboy sent to you immediately. Look, the American Embassy is supposed to contact me here. Is there any telephone calls or messages? Uh, no, monsieur. But I will inform the switchboard immediately that you have arrived and that you are in your room. Fine. Look, send up some bacon and eggs and toast and coffee, will you? Uh, certainly, monsieur. At once. No, madam, there were no planes to Paris all day. The fog only lifted an hour ago. Are you certain? Oh, quite sure. Also, I've checked the passenger list since the service was resumed, and according to the reports, your husband didn't leave by plane. I should check just to be sure. He said something about leaving a car in the parking lot. Oh, well, that may help. What kind of a car was it? I don't know. You don't know? No, I never saw it. You see, can I get a plane to Beauvais? Well, Beauvais has no airport. The nearest city that has one is Reims. Uh, but the next plane for Reims doesn't leave till the morning. You could fly to Paris and then get a plane from Paris to Reims. Oh, just wait a minute. If you flew straight to Amiens, you could probably get... Oh, dear, no, that doesn't save too much time either. Now, just a moment, I think... Um, can you put me on the first plane to Paris? Oh, certainly. One way or a turn. What? Oh, one way, please. That'll be seven pounds four, madam. But I don't have any... Oh, wait a minute. Yes, here it is. Is this enough? Well, I'm afraid not. Oh. And we don't usually take checks. Oh, I don't even have a checkbook with me. Look, isn't there someone who could help you? I don't think you understand. Mom and I only got to London last night. I don't know a single person here. Well, I don't believe that I can be of help. Oh, please, isn't there any way? The plane for Paris leaves in one hour, ten minutes. I'll deceit as long as possible. Oh, thank you.
me London, will you please? Piccadilly 3117. No answer, are you sure? The exchange has hmm. Do you wish it to try later? Yeah, keep trying, will you? Put me through to your reception desk. At your service. Oh, this is Mr. Ray Anderson. Anybody asked for me yet? Uh, not yet, Monsieur Anderson. Thank you. Stop. Well, lady, is this the street? No. Try the next block, please. Listen, lady, this is the seventh place we've tried. Don't you have no idea of where you live? Well, I know it sounds stupid, but I, I just can't remember. But a person can't just forget where she lives, can she? Please, just keep driving. I've got to find it. That's quite a fair you've run up there, you know, three pound twelve. Are you sure you've got enough? I've got this much. Will that do it? That's only three pound four. But when I get to the apartment, I can, I can get the rest for you. Listen, lady, I don't want to appear unkind, but I've got to account for my fares. Perhaps you'd better find your own way on foot. What's wrong, miss? Here, blow hard. You feel better. Had an argument with the boyfriend? Lost your job. No, I, I, I can't find my apartment. You what? I've walked for miles, and I have to catch a plane. But I don't have any money with me, and I, I don't know a soul here. Just repeat that slowly. You are American. Yes. I arrived here last night with my husband, and then he flew to Paris this morning. Or drove there. But he never arrived. I rushed out of the apartment just as soon as I saw the newspapers, but now I can't find my way back. I don't know what to do. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You haven't lost your memory. You can remember your name. Of course I can. I'm June Anderson. Ray, that's my husband. He's in the diplomatic service. He works for the State Department. He's still alive. But he might be dead. There was a woman with him. They had an accident. Oh, I've got to get to him. Come with me, Mrs. Anderson. Where? The American Embassy. Excuse me. Yeah? 
Well, I ask him to wait a minute. Well, Mrs. Anderson, this is a bit difficult. The billeting officer has gone off for the day and we can't find the roster. We have, of course, a record of your expected arrival. Then she's all right, sir? Oh, yes, of course. We take care of Mrs. Anderson somehow. You can leave it to us, officer. Very well, sir. I hope everything turns out all right, miss. Thank you. You've been very kind. I wanted to discuss this with you privately. Yes? You said that your husband told you he received an official call telling him to leave for Paris at once. Yes. Well, I'm not absolutely sure, but as far as I could check, there was no such call. He was expected to report here tomorrow morning, but I don't believe this Paris trip was in line with the official business. Of course, there may be a perfectly normal explanation, <laughs> oh, please, Mrs. Anderson, I, I may be mistaken. Well, what is it? It's St. James Chambers. It's their napkin. I must have put it in my pocket. Oh, well, that makes things a little easier. At least we know where you live. I get a car to take you home. But I don't want to go home. I want to go to my husband. Now, I've checked on the transportation to Beauvais. There's a plane to Reims at 7 in the morning, and you can get a car from there. I'd suggest you return to your flat, meanwhile. I've got to get to him. I've got to see him. We'll make inquiries immediately, Mrs. Anderson. I promise to let you know the moment we learn anything definite. Uh, don't worry. Thank you. Put me through the reception desk, will you, please? Yes, Clark? This is Ray Anderson speaking. Look, are you sure nobody's been trying to contact me? I am quite certain, monsieur. And my London call? Uh, there is no answer, monsieur. If the London papers have carried this story, she'll think I've been in a bad accident. An accident, monsieur? Where can I hire a car? Well, at this time of night, monsieur, it is possible, but it is not easy. Well, please try, will you? And I want one with a driver who knows the road to Beauvais. Very well, monsieur. I'll be in my room. Let me know when he gets here, will you? Monsieur Anderson, I regret a car cannot be available before another hour. Was that the earliest? Yes, sir. Uh, monsieur Anderson, a gentleman has just arrived from your embassy. He would like to see you. Send him up right away, will you? Very good, monsieur. Uh, Mr. Anderson would like you to go up to his room, please. It is 326. Come in. Mr. Anderson? Yes? I'm Jack Gordon of the American Embassy. The London office told me somebody would contact me. I'm certainly glad to see you. Oh? According to the newspaper, Mr. Anderson, you're lying in a hospital at Bouvet. In that case, what are you doing here? Well, I couldn't get a very clear picture from the French police, so I came along just on the off chance that... Well, uh, could you tell me what it's all about? I wish I had the answer to that one for you, Mr. Gordon. Thanks. Some character stole the car I was driving while I was filling up at a gas station. One of the tires had a slow leak, so if they were driving fast, I can understand why they crashed. The newspaper says that you were in the car and your wife. Obviously, the police couldn't identify the persons. But the car itself was carrying diplomatic license plates listed under my name. They obviously checked with the customs at Dunkirk. Do you uh, know the people that stole the car? No, but I got a pretty good look at them. About this conference, has it started? When the news came through about your accident, the meeting went ahead without you naturally. Look, I think we'd better get up to Bouvet. There's more behind this car theft business than meets the eye. Are you ready to go? I certainly am. You know, I've got an idea. Maybe my wife's up there, too. Oh. My car's downstairs. You can tell me the story as we go. Right. This car.
What did you turn off the main road for? Shortcut. Don't you think you're driving a bit fast? I don't think so. Well, I do, so take it easy. Relax. <laughs> Get out. Inside. trouble and you won't have any problems. I uh, don't suppose there's any point in me asking what all this is about. You guessed right. As I said, don't make any trouble and you won't have any problems. Just be a good boy. No, we have not been able to identify the dead woman yet. But what about my husband? The man with her was taken to a private nursing home. There was no room in our hospital. He is still unconscious. Can I... Can I see him? Of course, Mrs. Anderson. He is not under arrest. It is the Maison Nazier, not far from the cathedral. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. Merci. Merci Wife? Yes. I saw her as she came in. What are we going to do with her? This is storeroom across the hall. I think I'll phone the chief again. Don't like this at all. Give me a hand first. Hmm?
Hello? Mr. Gordon, a call from Paris for you. One room, please. What? Oh, hello, Chief. This is Jack. Oh, don't worry about Anderson. Not a peep out of him. What? He's locked in a room, good and tight. Ah, oh, now, wait a minute. Nothing but idiots working for me. I arrange everything down to the last detail. That poor Andre has to steal the car and then run it off the road. They didn't have time to get the stuff back. They had to steal off of the car. Half a million in diamonds. You two fans them as though they were a bag of toffee. They got them to the customs, all right. Hmm. The idiots couldn't get the stones back again. Philip got the stuff out of the wrecked car. Everybody and his brother is going to investigate. King for answers. King for reasons. All I know is we've got to move. Move fast. I'm going to move it. Eh? Anderson's wife's still now. Oh, thank you. They're keeping their head. We've got panic. They're holding her. Wow, now we got the whole family on our hands. I'm entirely surrounded by you. I think that's where we can Try up Anderson. Well, rip out the telephone. And move as fast as you can to Beauvais. Meet me at the Maison Nazi. And don't bungle that. Got it? Okay, Chief. Everything here is under control. Chief, I had to knock her out. She'd have gone tearing out for the police. We've got to get out of here as fast as we can. What about Jack? He should be here by now. He can take care of himself. And Andre? We can't leave him here. We'll take him along. In his condition? I imagine he'd prefer a little discomfort to ten years in prison. Unless we get the stuff into Belgium by tonight, we... Dear Mrs. Anderson. You know my name? May I get you something to eat? How do you know my name? We expected you. Oh, Ray didn't tell you. Ray isn't here. There was somebody else in that bed. My dear. Where is Ray? I want to see him. Why, certainly. I'll take you to him. No. On second thoughts, I think it would be better if I bring him here to you. No. No, I'd rather go to him. You'd better stay here and wait. We'll be back soon. You won't go off to Belgium. Belgium? Yes. All that stuff. You don't understand, Mrs. Anderson. Stuff? Belgium? What does it all mean? Oh, all right. Would you like a nice big juicy steak? Mm, yes. I'll get a car. I'll drive you to one of the nicest restaurants in northern France. Oh, can I have artichokes too? 
Oh, my God. Oh, and a banana split? I'd love a banana split. You shall have a whole bunch of bananas. Oh. And promise. On my word of honor. That's nice. Oh, one moment, please. She's awful dumb or awful smart. We can't leave her there. She'll blab so fast. Stealing diamonds isn't exactly safe. But if there's anything like murder involved here, count me out. Get Andre into your car. I'll sell you help him. I'll take her into my car. Hurry! Just let me die in peace. That's all I ask. You can die a little later. Come. I love European cars. May I drive? My dear Mrs. Anderson. Thank you for bringing in this gun. One of my officers has just informed me that Mrs. Anderson left the nursing home with another man. Well, what are you waiting for? Aren't you going to stop him? Be calm, monsieur. Everything is being done. I have ordered the grand alarm. The whole countryside is alerted. Why this great efficiency all of a sudden? Monsieur, yesterday it was only a stolen car. Today, it is a woman. Why couldn't I choose some safe profession like steeplejack or suicide pilot? We'll be across the border in less than 30 minutes. We'll put you into a hospital right away. As if there's anything left of me to put into a hospital. I'm worried about something else. What? When I got the package out of the wrecked car, I meant to keep it. But the chief's got it now. He's getting to be a little hard to live with. Suppose he decides to go it solo. He won't. Must be a very good restaurant. Eh? Why? So far away. Located both cars, both making for the frontier, but on different roads. What kind of a chance have we got? They're setting up roadblocks as quickly as they can, but which roads they will pick for they get away. Could be something else again, eh? I think we should have been there 
there by now? Look, you're sure you know the right way. Will you be quiet? If you wanted another five minutes, you'd better keep your mouth shut. It's a pleasure. Ray! Oh, gee, honey, you've had a tough time. I tried to reach you when I saw the newspapers. You're all right. How did you get yourself into this mess? Doesn't matter, no. Hold me. Don't let me go. Yeah, but I still don't Mr. see... Mr. Anderson, I suppose you would like to return to London, eh? Huh? Yes. We can drive you to the nearest port when you are ready. No, thank you. I think we'll walk. <laughs> Thank you.